All right, so we're going to get started on a new uh, new company. Like you talked about, wire mold is one type of company, so obviously privately held. So we so want to talk about you know what happens in some other situations. So this is going to lead up to talking about Pratt and Whitney. So on June 1st, 1991, Mark Warren drove across town from Hartford, Connecticut, headquarters of United Technologies Corporation, to East Hartford Corp headquarters at Pratt and Whitney. UTC's largest subsidiary and the world's largest builder of aircraft engines. UTC Chairman Bob Daniel had just given him a new assignment, one for which his background at UTC's corporate controller and star cost cutter seemed ideal preparation. The problem at Pratt appeared to be structural and substantial, but not desperate. As the world's largest builder of military engines, Pratt was faced with the end of the Cold War a reality to confirm shortly with the collapse of the Russian counter, counter Corp in August of 1991. It suddenly seemed likely that much of the military engine business was gone for good. In the short term, the loss of military business was offset by extraordinary booming orders for commercial engines. As the world's market share leader in commercial aircraft engines, Pratt had ridden the wave and racked up a record prof operating profit of $1.1 billion dollars in 1990 and a record $7 billion of military and commercial sales. However, anyone familiar with the roller coaster demand cycle in commercial engine business knew that sales at this level could not be sustained for long, and in fact, orders for spare parts had already started to fall. Therefore, Mark Korn's job as a new executive vice president for operations at Pratt was to prepare for the manufacturing operation in a massive company with 51,000 employees for a perhaps 10% permanent reduction in size of business, and to do this before commercial order boom collapsed. As it turned out, Mark had no time to work with. June 1991 would prove to be the peak month of production volume in the history of Pratt & Whitney. With shop hours of work, the conventional Pratt measure of productivity, production activity running at an annual rate of 11 million. Soon, commercial jet aircraft orders, which had reached a record high of 1,662 in 1989, started to drop, drop steeply as the world recession set in, falling to a low of 364 in 1993. All right, so give you an idea. So that's 51,000 employees, and they're going to make some changes. So to think that how much we struggle to make changes, they have 51,000, and we're going to hear how they, how they went about that, okay?